Greetings everyone. My name is John Sol. I'm a senior auditor and trainer at EPI. Today I'm going to give you an overview of the content of the certified TIA 942 internal auditor course in order to give you a good understanding of what to expect from this training. I hope you will enjoy this presentation. The CTIA course is a two-day training course intended to prepare participants to conduct a TIA 942 internal audit program. It will provide the skills and knowledge to run a successful program. So let's have a look at the training agenda. On day one, we will cover the fundamental concepts and process of conducting an ANSI TIA 942 audit. We will look at how to manage an audit program. We'll give you the skills to plan the audit program, and we will show you how to conduct the ANSI TIA 942 audit. On day two of the agenda, we'll look at how to prepare the report and how to distribute the audit report to the appropriate people within the auditee company. We need to follow up on the audit report outcomes undertake the corrective actions. Then if the site is in a state which is um, able to be externally audited, the external auditor will be able to issue a conformity certificate. Once a site has a conformity certificate, it needs to maintain that certificate via the ISO processes of subsequent surveillance audits. So we'll look at um, surveillance audits and after a three year period, we should do a recertification audit in accordance to ISO. At the end of the two days, we should also have an exam. The exam will be a closed book exam. It is 40 multiple choice questions. We give you the answer and you choose the right one, A, B, C or D. You will have 60 minutes in which to do the 40 questions which should be sufficient to do the exam. The pass mark will be 32 out of 40. So if you get 32 or more right, you will be awarded a certificate. So let's look at module one, the fundamental concepts and process of conducting an ANSI TIA 942 audit. During module one, we will look at the following items. You should be able to describe and understand the terms and definitions used in auditing. You'll understand the differences between an internal auditor and an external auditor. We'll look at the various audit principles that you should follow and implement. And we'll also look at the competency level requirements of an auditor. So let's look at the definition of what an audit is. Based on the ISO 1911 definition, it states an audit is a systematic, independent and documented process by which we obtain evidence and we evaluate it objectively to determine the extent to which the audit criteria are being fulfilled. So what is audit criteria? Based on the ISO 1911 definition, audit criteria can be sets of policies, procedures or requirements against which evidence is collected and compared. However, the ANSI TIA 942 um, consists mainly of physical requirements, i.e. do you have it or not have it? So with a ANSI TIA audit, it is less subjective. A non-conformity often requires investment in hardware or making physical changes to the data center environment. As part of the training, we'll also look at what is it, what is a audit conclusion. Based on the ISO 1911 definition, it is the outcome of an audit after considering the audit objectives and all findings when compared to those objectives. Under the ANSI TIA 942 audit, this will result in statements of conformity achievement to a particular rated level or rating level. With TIA, we have the rating levels one, two, three or four. A positive audit outcome or conclusion from an, from an internal audit program 
typically leads to a request by the auditee for an external audit. If a positive audit conclusion is given by an external auditor from a certification body, then it typically leads to the award of a conformity certificate or conformity declaration. As part of the training, we will also look at the core competencies that an auditor will need to possess and what knowledge and skills he needs to have. He will obviously have to have a range of skills and knowledge. He needs ideally to have industry sector understanding of the industry the data center works in, has to have good skills in understanding of management systems and standards, has to have a very good broad understanding of regulatory frameworks and regulatory requirements. He should have a strong understanding of controls and risk and risk management and should have strong auditing techniques. In terms of skills, an auditor will work with lots of people up and down the organization, so we'll need to have strong interpersonal skills, need to have strong communication, written and verbal, most auditors are typically analytical people and the analytical reasoning is based on objectivity or facts. During the training, we will look at the qualifications that an auditor should have. He should have a quality broad education, should have total work experience within the domains of data centers, should work and have experience of working in the data center environment, should have an appropriate auditor training and certification, or the best outcomes from an auditor is someone who has auditor experience, both general and specific to the ANSI TIA 942 standard. The best auditors are ones which also have local experience as well as global experience. The auditor should also be part of professional memberships from an auditing perspective as well as from data center industry. An auditor should also have ongoing professional development to ensure he stays current. Under module two, we will look at how to manage an audit program. The objectives of module two will be one, to establish the audit objectives, two, establishing the audit program with the auditee company. On this sheet, we show some of the elements of an audit program, the objectives and the extent. The audit program will describe the following elements. Why is the auditee doing the audit? Some may be doing it for marketing value. Some may be doing it for quality control. Some may be doing it for both. Which standard and level are they pursuing? First off, which version of the standard? Is it an older version or the current version? And what rating level are they trying to audit against? Rated one, two, three, or four. We also need to consider what is included and what is excluded within the audit program. Is it the whole building? Is it the facility and some computer rooms? Is it one off specific computer room? From a TIA 942 audit, from a certification point of view, we cannot do a partial audit just power, just mechanical, just architecture. We need to do the whole system covering telecom, electrical, architecture, and mechanical. During the program, we will also look at the various roles and responsibilities undertaken by various individuals. A number of individuals will be required to successfully manage a program. The responsibility of managing an audit program should be assigned to one or more individuals who have a general understanding of audit principles, have a competencies required of an auditor or auditors, should have good management skills, should have a good technical and business understanding relevant to the activities being audited. They don't need to be a subject matter expert. However, it would help to have some degree of understanding of the ANSI TIA 942 system. When running an audit program, we will look at the various resources that are required to successfully complete a audit program. We need appropriate financial resources. Financial resources will be arranged by the auditee. 
he needs to cover the cost of the audit. It could also include uh, costs of external auditors and other resources, as well as internal resources of the auditee company. If an auditor has to travel to site, there will be travel and lodging expenses. Once an audit program is done, there will be cost of fixing potential non-conformity findings. In some instances, the costs of fixing non-conformities could be considerable and could often be hard to predict depending on the rating level that is trying to be achieved. We also need to have an understanding that there's also costs of upkeep of the certification if we follow the ISO certification process, which means we need to consider surveillance and recertification audits. There will be various human resources and we will cover those as part of the training. In the module three of the training, we will look at how to plan the NCTIA 942 audit program. The objectives of module three is first off, planning the schedule with the auditee. Secondly, looking at resources that are required to undertake the program. We will also look at the various tools and equipment that may be required to undertake the, the uh, program of work. And we will have various requirements around documentation and records. In planning the schedule, there will be various time and resource requirements, and it will depend on various factors when doing the audit on site. The higher the target rating level will require more time and resource. The number and size of each computer room under scope will impact. If you have multiple computer rooms, are they similar in design or are they different? If they're different design, therefore it could impact on the time and resources. Obviously we're looking at facilities and if critical equipment is on the top of buildings or outside of the building, weather conditions could impact on the schedule. We also need to make sure that the documentation, staff that need to be interviewed will be available at the same time so that they do not create delays in the execution of the program. Therefore, we have to double confirm with the auditee that all resources, documentation and systems are in place before going on site. As part of the training, we will show you how to create an audit program schedule. On this, on this particular slide, we have an example of a small audit schedule. The audit team leader from the auditee site needs to ensure that they allocate the appropriate resources as required at the appropriate times in accordance with the schedule. In this particular case, we can see that we note down the audit tour, we note down the date, and we have the various steps involved in the audit program from the opening meeting, a tour of the facilities, doing document reviews. Obviously, we need to allocate time for lunch breaks, tea, coffee breaks, and ensure that resources are available at the appropriate times. And at the end of the day, we will typically have a end of day review to see where we're at. With the TIA audit, we have lots of documentations that we need to consider. Documents will come in different categories. There are three main categories which need to be present during the audit program. With TIA data centers, we obviously have design documents. So all documents relating to the data center design itself. These design documents will also include evidence based on capacity calculations for power and cooling and various other um, parts of the data center. We have process documents, all documents relating to operational and maintenance procedures. We also need to have an understanding of various third party declarations or official declarations or statements. On this slide, we will look at some of the process documents that apply to TIA. Um, we need to have various maintenance agreements in place with our vendors. We need to ensure they have proper maintenance processes when undertaking maintenance in the data center. We need to make sure that the appropriate electrical studies are done to ensure that the electrical 
systems will function as required and to ensure that we have adequate protection for the installation as well as ensuring that we do various studies like ArcFlash to consider potential from ArcFlash and how it could harm humans to ensure humans are wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment. And as we can see there, we've got some pictures showing the um, coordination study, the load flow, and a person wearing the appropriate um, protection from ArcFlash. We also need to consider security processes. Though not formally required, they will also give us an understanding whether the physical security measures are effectively deployed. Under Module 4, we will look at how to conduct the audit. Module 4 is a reasonably large module. After completing this module, you should be able to describe and understand how to conduct an opening meeting, how to conduct the actual audit itself, how to interview and undertake interviews with relevant staff at the data center. An important part is the documentation review of the various categories, telecom, architecture, electrical, cooling, mechanical. We need to do a physical facility review, walking around the site and checking out the various components of facility and computer rooms. We will also cover some of the typical non-conformities which are found during an audit. Non-conformities or findings could be within architectural elements, could be electrical elements, could be cooling, mechanical attributes or elements, or it could be the way that the telecommunication systems and distributors and various telecommunication spaces have been deployed. We will look at how to prepare the audit conclusions, at the end of any audit, we also have to have a closing meeting to do a review of the audit findings. During this module, we'll be looking at the requirements for opening and closing meetings. Each audit shall commence with a formal opening meeting. All involved in the audit should attend the meeting. We should ensure that senior management is there to show support to the overall program. The same group should attend the closing meeting as well. All participants at the meetings shall be formally recorded in an attendance sheet according to ISO requirements. When having meetings, we need to set a friendly tone, make the teams feel at ease to get the maximum benefit from the program. An important part of conducting an audit is the audit triangle. The, the objective of an audit is to collect evidence for potential non-conformities. We have three primary methods of doing that. This is the audit triangle. We review documentation or documents. We review the facilities, the, fac the physical um, facilities themselves, and we interview and question core people with, within the data center itself, and we take audit notes or findings. When doing an audit, one of the um, most important tasks is doing documentation review. So therefore, we need to ensure that the documents that we are reviewing are the latest versions of all documents. They should be the as-builts or the current design documents. We also need to verify that all required documents are present and ensure that the labels are easily identified. If they're not labeled, we want to add a label to them ourselves. We should have a document checklist to check against the documents that are available. Check the um, document controls to ensure that the version date and they are in fact the as-built approved documentation. As part of the training, we will have a session around the various typical non-conformities which typically um, occur depending on the target rating level. For example, within the electrical systems, typical findings or non-conformities could be in the UPS systems. For example, um, rated 2, we need to have redundant components or N plus 1 modules. We typically find that the electrical studies have not been provided. The auditee may have them, they just may not be able to find them. Telecommunications, 
we have various issues that could occur there. Typically, racks are not grounded in computer rooms. Telecommunication infrastructures are not labeled within the cooling systems. Um, obviously, rated three and four data centers need to be concurrently maintainable. So if we have single piping systems for cooling, single piping fuel systems, they will not be concurrently maintainable. Rate of four needs that fault tolerance. So the various mechanical systems may not have the appropriate systems in place to detect an issue, isolate an issue, and switch to the backup to automate the fault tolerance. There may be infrastructure which, which is not provisioned, like no gas suppression systems in computer rooms when it is a requirement. Architecture, we find various issues around compartmentalization for, say, rated three, four example. But during the training, we'll have a more substantial view of these particular areas. It is a mandatory requirement to have a closing meeting. All participants at the closing meeting should be formally recorded in an attendance sheet. We thank all personnel involved and thank the auditee for their hospitality. We reconfirm and restate the audit objectives, scope and uh, target rating level because they may have changed during the audit program. We will also highlight if there were any limitations or concerns. It could be areas which could not be assessed or documentation or facts which were missing or unable to be obtained. The closing meeting, we typically only provide a high level overview of findings. We indicate that full conclusions can only be provided after a full review of all um, audit findings is conducted off-site. Under Module 5, we will look at how to prepare a report and how to distribute the audit report to the appropriate people. So under Module 5, the objectives will be looking at how to um, write an audit report, how to classify non-conformities and findings, how to format an audit report in an appropriate manner. On this sheet here, we are demonstrating some of the audit report requirements. The audit report forms the basis from which the auditee will create a corrective action report and a corrective action plan. So therefore, it needs to be clear and concise. The audit report should at least contain the following elements. The auditee company and its registered name. The exact location of the audit to include rooms, the room name, the room number, and if the audit is done in part of the data center building. Date of audit, names of auditor or audit, audit team members. Reporting the findings for the non-conformities, we need to classify them into various categories. With a TIA audit, a 942 audit, we have five types of classifications which are used to um, provide the finding classifications. We have a major or cat one or category one finding. We have minor or category two cat two findings. We have OFIs, which are opportunities for improvement, also known as AFIs or area for improvement. We also have uh, RFIs or requests for information whereby the auditor is not able to determine if a non-conformity may exist or not. If it's a quality data center, we can also give positives. Different classifications of the audit findings could lead to a different type and urgency of corrective action depending on the auditee's requirement to fix the findings. As part of the training, we will also give an example of a typical audit report format. The audit report format should have a sequence section indicating, indicating the nonconformities based on either room or the categories. We demonstrate the audit findings. We give the audit finding a nonconformity classification, the CAT1, CAT2, RFI, etc. We 
also typically indicate the clause from the TIA standard to add value and also to explain why it is seen as a non-conformity. In module six, we will look at how to follow up on the audit and the audit progress. So under module six, um, participants should be able to describe and understand what a corrective action report is, how corrective action plans are created, and how to evaluate the corrective action report or plan from the auditee. This particular slide here shows the overall process from uh, auditor identifying non-conformities all the way through to external audit and issue of certificate. But in terms of the corrective action flow, it's the um, boxes in red which cover this particular section. It is up to the organization to investigate and quantify what corrective action to put in place. He may um, go and consult with consultants if required. So the organization will find or identify the root cause of the issue or finding. The organization will then determine an appropriate corrective action or preventative action to mitigate against the root cause and provide a corrective action report with the plan. We also provide during the training an example of the car to see the various steps which are involved in the process of um, the corrective action processing. And as you can see here, we have the assessment findings. We do an analysis of the root cause. The auditee provides a corrective action plan. The auditor is then verifying is that plan suitable to fix the corrective action all the way through to acceptance of the corrective action or preventative action. Under module seven, we will look at the um, process you should go through when you want to request a formal external audit. Under module seven, the participant in the class should be able to describe and understand how, the, how to request a formal external audit. On this slide here, we go through the major parts of what you should be doing when requesting a formal audit. So once the organization is believed to be ready for a conformity certification audit, it would need to engage an external auditor. Organizations should be accredited to ensure that you get proper audit outcomes. Audit organizations should be a registered accredited certification body, check for a valid accreditation. You have a choice of engaging a local auditor or an international auditor. A local auditor will obviously reduce cost and more, and more likely have flexibility in scheduling. However, if you have multiple data centers across multiple geographical countries or regions, it may be advisable to engage an audit company with international experience across different regions. We also give some hints and tips around selecting auditors, mainly because an audit is not a one-off engagement. From initial audit to certificate award can take time. And the overall process, according to ISO, also involves surveillance audits and recertification audits. You should check and interview the auditor to get a feeling for their mindset. Are they, are they like a lawyer? Are they like a consultant? How are they going to think? How are they going to work with you? You should do reference checks, should ask for sample reports to see the quality of their systems. You also need to consider that the auditor is not responsible for a data center to meet the requirements of the standard. It is up to the auditee to get the data center up to the standard. Payment is expected upon submission of the audit report, not at time of certification. Under module eight, we will look at the process of issuing a conformity certificate. Under this module, you should be able to describe and understand the requirements of a certificate and how to register a certificate or where to register these certificates. On this slide here, we will, we will look at criteria for issuing a conformance 
certificate. Certificates can only be issued once the site is cleared from all major CAT1 nonconformities. Minor CAT2 nonconformities could still be present on the corrective action report and plan. However, it is the external auditor's judgment call to evaluate if the total impact of the sum of the CAT2s doesn't pose a problem for the overall intent of the rating level being chosen. Opportunities for improvement have no impact on the issuance of the certificate, but they will give guidance around quality and potential improvements which could improve the overall availability of the data centre based on auditor's experience and best practices. We will also look at the advantages of registration of certificates. It is highly advisable to register your certificates with the TIA942.org website. Registration has clear advantages. Prospective auditees can validate the authenticity of the certificate so it builds trust within the data center world. It has improved marketing visibilities as the data center will be globally listed. The system will also go, do surveillance and recertification audit reminders automatically to send out to the data center owners or operators so that they can stay current. Under module nine, we will look at surveillance audits and the process around surveillance audits. Upon completing module nine, the participant should be able to describe and understand the purpose and reasoning for surveillance audits. On this slide here, we are showing the full audit cycle in accordance with ISO standards. The life cycle of conformance to a international standard comprises the initial certification award, surveillance audits and recertification audit. The full audit life cycle is a three year cycle. We award the certificate. We then have a first year surveillance audit. We then have a second year surveillance audit. And in the third year, if we follow the ISO processes, we then recertify the site. Surveillance audits. The successful completion of a surveillance audit will demonstrate that the organization is capable of continuing conformity to the TIA 942 standard. A letter of confirmation will be provided by the external auditor to confirm the continued conformance to the standard. However, during the surveillance audit, if new non-conformity findings are found, the corrective action process will start again and the auditee will need to um, put in place an audit plan to remove the CAT ones and any RFIs. Under module 10, we will look at the recertification audit process. So module 10 will describe and give a full understanding of the recertification audit. According to ISO, recertification audits are conducted once every three years. The aim of a recertification audit is to revalidate that all audit criteria are still meeting the requirements of the TIA standard. Note that the standard may have evolved in a new version with changed criteria might have been released. The external auditor will then have to specifically validate against the changed criteria. In a worst case scenario, the release of the new standard could invalidate an existing certification. So how do I work out which version I should recertify to? Due to the ANSI TIA 942 standard having a large portion of physical requirements, it might be impossible to meet the change criteria of the new version due to a variety of limitations. Although not recommended, it is possible to recertify conformity against a previous version of the standard. It is not recommended to recertify conformity more than one version back. Where non-conformities are found, the corrective action process will kickstart again. 
This ends the sneak peek of our CTIA training. Further details on this training can be found on our company's website using the URL given on this slide. I hope you have enjoyed the sneak peek of the certified TIA 942 Internal Auditor course. I would like to thank you for your attention. And we are looking forward to seeing you at the next CTIA training. In the meantime, to contact us, you can use the email address as mentioned on this slide. You can also follow us on the social media listed here. I hope you've enjoyed the sneak peek.